Greetings YouTube, the doctor is in. Dr. Urius Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Marvel Contest of Champions. And wow, we have got a lot of new news to talk about. A lot of stuff dropped. We had a live stream on Friday and then they've kind of included it all in here on the all, you know, the the Marvel Contest of Champions news site, which is also where the web store is. Uh, we also have a, a listing in the forums for you know a more detailed look at the september side quest so let's get into this stuff for our first thing we've got the august 30th so that was yesterday circus maximus announcement so this is for maestro has declared four months of celebratory games to honor his return and the festival will begin with the circus maximus so this is just a rehash of the side quest and the monthly September quest. Uh, this begins on September 4th. There it is, and it ends on October 9th. And uh, we'll go through this when we go into the September side quest and the, the uh, general forums, the general discussion forums, because it's a lot more detailed. Uh, I think it's a better looking format, but this is just the, uh, the opening for this. And then um, what else did we get? So we'll go through that. Uh, we got our release notes for, uh, and when did this come out? This came out, again, this came out yesterday. So uh, I'm sorry, this came out on Friday because today is the first. So we've got our new events. We've got our event quest, which is Lupus in Fabula. And uh, talks about that. We've got our side quest, which we're going to talk about. We've got new champions coming out, which are going to be Count Nefaria and Shathra. Uh, I believe she was one of the uh, winners and for the Summer's Choice. We've got Act 9, Chapter 1 coming out. So Glycon, Hell Self-Destructed, but the sinister plotting of Ouroboros is far from over. So we've got this coming out. Luckily, Superior Kang has some secrets to share in the form of holotapes scattered around the battle world, blah, blah, blah. So it's chapter one called The Reckoning. This is the first step to a new progression title. So I had put a video out a while ago, months ago, but in November of 2023, if you recall, on November 15th, 2023, we got our new progression title progression titles come out about every year and a half about every 18 months so my prediction is that we were going to get a new progression title sometime between may and june of 2025 a year and a half after we got valiant and it looks like we're on the road to that with act nine chapter one my guess is that we are going to have to get uh, probably Act 9 Chapter 1 will come out now. Act 9 Chapter 2 will come out sometime in the sp early spring. And then Act 9 Chapter 3 will come out late May, early June. And they will there will be materials in there to rank seven stars up to rank four and my guess is we're going to have to at least explore act nine chapter three and rank four probably two or three seven stars in order to get that new progression level so start thinking about what you're going to do because it's less than a year away now and this is the first step towards that so Looks like it's going to happen eventually. You know, they've got to do it. And the, um, the, the summer of suffering, winter of woe, spring of sorrow, all that stuff is coming to a close. So they need another major event that's hard that is going to drain units uh, from people's accounts. All right, then we've got the Glorious Games, which is the next saga event that's happening. The Realm events. So... Um, a, alongside every summer of the Battle Realm. Realm events are a brand new type of event which will, in which points will be contributed on a global level, and this is the first one called Crystal Cleansing. The, I think this is pretty ingenious on the part of Kabam. We all love to hoard crystals, and 
that actually costs Kabam money when we do that because it costs, they have to, crystals are code and they have to store that code and everybody's hoarding crystals so they have to take room up in their servers to store all that code. So they need it, they need us to get rid of that stuff so they don't have to store as much. And I think this is a pretty cool event. We're going to get open crystals and we're going to get points. And when we get so many points, we'll get rewards. We'll talk about that too. And then we got the Champions game calendar. There was a bunch of bug fixes. They said they buffed Onslaught here, and then they lined that out. So that's a no. Bunch of different, uh, bunch of different fixes. So what else did we get? Okay, so we've got the Glorious Games Archive, which is our new Saga event. And the interesting thing in this picture here is... There is a picture of Spiral right there. And if you're not familiar with her, she is in the Mojo-verse. She is right there, and, and she started out in the X-Men. Very great. Jim Lee draw some great pictures of her, or drew some great pictures of her. Um, so these new Saga tags are going to be Provocateur and Secutor, and they are going to be tied in with basically all of the different events in the game. And then there's going to be Saga Tactics, which will appear in alliance war battleground metas challenge objectives incursion challenge sectors and boosts and nodes so we've seen with incursions that you uh get special rewards if you only do it with saga champions and the tactics are going to be for provocateur which are defender tactics and sequitur which are attacker tactics so that is there and our provocateur champions are going to start with Absorbing Man all the way down to Emma Frost. These are not really in alphabetical order, um, but these champions all are, uh, I think they're, and they're not really even in alphabetical order by class. These are all, so these are all mystic champions. Looks like a lot of them are mystics. And then we've got the Secutor champions, which look like they are Count Nefaria, the leader, She-Hulk, Luke Cage, a lot of science champions in here. There are some uh, science and what looks like tech, and then mystic and mutant champions. Um, and then they, they go through the saga rewards. And then... Then we got our Champions game calendar. So they're announcing the new calendar with these nigh invulnerable crystals are a chance to earn dedication medallions as well as blood, sweat, and tears tokens. For only the luckiest and strongest, there is a very rare chance the crystal could award a seven-star Titania and a strongest of all exclusive title. Every nigh invulnerable crystal guarantees one dedication medallion Trade in your medallions in the Trader's Outpost for a 6 or 7 star Chilith and a dedicated to muscle title. You'll need to be dedicated to, to checking into the contest daily to earn medallions as only 20 are available and you'll need 18 to claim your champion. Extra medallions can be traded in for Mysterium. So I think this is, this is replacing the Magnetron Crystal and the... Because it's a new Saga event, so we had the... We had the Nightcrawler Saga event, which was the X Ruin Stones. Then we had the Captain Movie Margul saga, saga event, and that was the Magnetron Crystals. This is the new one. And then the Blood, Sweat, and Tears tokens can be used in the Trader's Outpost to be exchanged for profile picks, tides, and limited time crystals. Okay, so that is going to run for quite some time. September 4th to October 2nd is when we're going to see that calendar. And then lastly, we've got Count Nefaria. So they did a little spotlight on him, base stats. He is going to be uh, probably mid-tier, rank 3, level 45. He's science, I know that. That I do know. So strengths, fight against health and power gain. Count Nefaria inflicts opponent with energy buildup debuffs whenever they gain health or power from buffs or passives. These debuffs are a key resource of his kit, so when fighting opponents who do either of those, he'll have a lot more. So this is kind of like an anti-Kushala or an anti-Werewolf uh, by Night. <clears throat> Evading special attacks, Count Nefaria can evade incoming attacks 
that he would have well-timed block, applying debuffs. He's available to apply a lot of build-up debuffs and then non-contact attacks during Ionic Overcharge. All of Count Nefaria's attacks become non-contact energy attacks. His weakness, he's debuff immune, so we've got another one that's debuff immune. Bleed, as being made of Ionic Energy, Count Nefaria is immune to bleed. However, whenever he would be inflicted with a bleed while fighting a non-Mystic opponent, he loses Ionic Energy like, this would be like Nick Fury, evade punishment, so his abilities, uh, Count Nefaria's body is composed of Ionic Energy, granting him immunity to power, steal, and bleed effects, and 90% shock and incinerate resistance, so a lot of good stuff there. Um, no poison, though. Uh, no poison. Energy buildup. Whenever the opponent fills a bar of power, they gain 15 stored energy. For every 1% of the opponent's max health or power they would gain from a buff or passive, they gain 2 stored energy. This is unaffected by reduced regenerate. Every 10 stored energy is automatically converted into indefinite energy buildup debuff. So that's going to be his shtick. Well time blocks. He evades, apparently. Ionic charges. He gains them from well-timed blocks. Uh, when he would be inflicted with a bleed effect from uh, fighting a non-Mystic champion. And uh, they grant a bonus to his attack rating. They also grant up to a lot physical energy and physical resistance. Okay, so he looks pretty cool. Uh, this is the announcement. I guess we'll be getting a deep dive from him here pretty soon. He's got a lot. This is a lot to go over. Let's take a look at the side quest. So the Ludum Maximus, use the Cestercius to gain access to Ludum Maximus side quest events. You get these coins from the Storm the Gate solo event. Gain shattered key item from special single fight against Count Nefaria in the final week. Okay, New Ludum Maximus side quests populate each week. Enter a teleporter to one of the three random paths. So it's kind of like the gate stuff. Alternatively, use the Arius key item to select which path to take. Earn Arius key item in the slow burn solo event. So there's a solo event where we can get a key. Otherwise, we're going to be getting coins. Each Luna Maximus crest runs for one week, except the final one, which will run for two weeks. So this is an extra week. Uh, side quest. Solo objectives reset weekly except for the final week. Collect shards to open. Let the games begin crystals, which is the special crystal for the the event. So here we have our solo event and entry items. So these are the coins that we're going to get. We're going to get one of these. Eventually at milestone 17, we're going to get a special fifth week key and then we're going to get a profile pick. Step two, enter the Ludum Maximus Contains three different paths with specific enemies, classes, and buff profiles. Each path contains four fights and five difficulties. Threat levels one through five. Each use a teleporter that will randomly send you to one of the three paths. Or use a key and enter a second teleporter that allows you to pick your path. And let's go down to level five and four rewards. So we're going to have Let the Games Begin Crystals and Tier 6 Class Catalyst Fragment Crystal 5%. Five of those, Mysterium, Metal Crystal Shards, and Seven Star Hero Crystals, 500. So, uh, and then we're going to get Six Star Hero Crystal Shards, 1,000 for the Threat Level 4 uh, and Cavalier Crystals. Step three, complete weekly solo objectives and month-long solo event to earn additional rewards. So solo objectives give us Mysterium. Weeks one through four, even though there's a fifth week. I'm not sure why there's not here. And then, um, so that's proven. Let's go all the way down here to, where is Valiant? There's no Valiant here, huh? It's Paragon. So we're getting Mysterium, Tier 4, Alpha Class, Alpha Catalyst Fragments, more Mysterium and more Tier 4. Here's Tier 5, 6 stars. No... No Valiant solo objectives, huh? And then there's a solo objective called, that's Among Tyrants. This is called Panem. This must be weak. Panem et Circenses. And there is down to Par uh, Paragon. Titan Hero Crystals. That's a big one. We're starting to see these now a lot. 
So it looks like we can get 2,000 of those. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. And then there's the Slow Burn solo event. And there is a Paragon Plus. So it looks like they're, they're, they're giving a break to Paragon players here. And this is where we get the 6-star Awakening Gem. 6-star Tier 2 Primordial Dust. And then we're also going to get that here and a 6-star Awakening Gem Crystal. And then you can open these Let the Games Begin Crystals, which, uh, again, these are going to have a Hercules. That's a big one for a lot of people. So that, it looks pretty spicy. Uh, pretty good for the side quest event and pretty good for these six different things. We're going to have a bunch of different stuff. I'm excited about this uh, Crystal Cleansing. I have a ton of crystals. Um, let's look at the, they do have rewards here. So let's look at that. We need to open a billion crystals. And milestones are set up at every 33 million crystals opened. There's units in here. There's tier one primordial dust, uh, five star hero crystal shards. Everybody's getting these, by the way. This all the way goes down to tier two primordial dust. More units. How many units are in here? 150. Looks like 300. Um. It's like 300 units all the way down. There's a title, a profile badge, and an exalted crystal, which I don't, it doesn't really say what's in the exalted crystals. We got more tier two primordial dust, some seven star shards, uh, some revives. Looks like the big thing is going to be the tier two primordial dust and some six and seven star crystal shards. So that's all free stuff, which is great. So, you know, pay attention. Uh, it will be there. All right, that is the video I got for everybody. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.